What's going on guys, have a good night, back to video, and today we're going to be taking a look at some Clash Royale conspiracy theories. Now if you don't know, theories are typically just a different perspective when trying to explain certain things. So yeah, some of you may not agree with the theories and that's completely fine, they're just theories. You can probably think of it as just a story and that's it. With that being said though, feel free to comment down below your opinions and also to enter the November giveaway, simply like and comment and that's pretty much it. So, let's get right into it. In the Clash universe, the king is a face we've never seen before until Royale came along. The king obviously rules the arena with his two daughters, which guard the two other towers. But why are there Clash of Clans troops? in the arena. Why are they there? And how did they get there? A possible explanation to that was the king forced them to come along with him. In a commercial, which by the way never aired in North America, or really anywhere but just one country, the king is seen recruiting troops but in some occasions taking some without their consent, essentially forcing them to come along. When they finally do arrive to the arena, the king is seen showing them around explaining what to do, even though clearly we see that they have no clue what they're doing. They run to defeat the enemies, and they fall into the water. Essentially, these commercials are telling a story of where they came from, which is obvious, Clash of Clans. In the commercials, you can clearly see that the other side of the arena only has new cards that were invented in Clash Royale. So like we discussed, the theory highlights that the king may have forced some troops from the Clash of Clans universe into the Clash Royale segment of that same universe to come fight for his side. Most of us believe the arenas are your typical kind of ground. The miners seen digging across, but is he actually digging? Why is he going faster when digging than when he is running on the arena? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Well, the theory is that the arenas are actually hollow. The miner going faster when digging makes no sense, unless, of course, he is not digging. The arena may have already been dug up, but there's still a problem here. Even if he didn't have to dig, he should still be going at the same speed he is on ground. The speed the miner travels is the fastest in the entire game, and there's probably only one explanation. The miner doesn't run. He uses a minecart. But where does the minecart come from? Well, not Clash Royale, but from Clash of Clans. When you look closely at a gold mine in Clash of Clans, you can see a minecart bringing the gold from the underground world and back down. But the underworld theory doesn't just apply to Clash Royale. In episode 10 of Clash of Rama, we can see there's an underground world below the Clash of Clans village. And where's the entrance to that underground world? The gold mine. And who works down there? The Miner. So it wouldn't be no surprise if the Clash Royale arenas also had some type of underground world. If you still aren't convinced, we have more evidence because in the Royal Ghost trailer, he can be seen sitting in a throne under the arenas. Because when he's awakened, he rises from the ground. And where is he now? The arena. As we mentioned, the arena may be hollow. But to further support this, if we take a close look at battles in Clash Royale, when troops die, they don't disappear but turn into elixir. This is because troops are obviously made of elixir. But moments after bursting into elixir, the elixir is seen slowly disappearing. But it's not disappearing. It's actually soaking into the ground and dripping down to the underground world. Apart from the elixir, the skeleton of the troop will also fall down to the same place. This explains how the graveyard works. When deployed, the skeletons of the fallen troops from battles will rise and participate in their final battle. This is also the reason why you can place the graveyard anywhere in the arena, because troops can die anywhere. Pekka is a Finnish name for boys. Even though Google Translate might want you to believe it translates to John, Pekka is rather the Finnish Peter. But that doesn't mean anything when you consider that the Pekka is actually not a word or a name. It's actually an acronym. Even though we have no idea what these letters stand for, in August of 2012, Supercell held a competition to see who can guess what the letter stood for. And the winner of that contest was... Perfect Enraged Knight 
killer of assassins. But as stated in one of the Clash of Clans loading screens, the P.E.K.K.A is referred to as a her, and in Clash Royale it gives off a hint that there may be another mask under that mask. But what is inside of her? Well, you might be surprised that there's actually nothing. Many have stated that the P.E.K.K.A armor is actually hollow inside. The theory is that the builder created the P.E.K.K.A and is simply nothing more than a robot. Supercell has even said the P.E.K.K.A may be a knight, samurai, or a robot. While the sounds it makes definitely sounds like a robot, there's no really doubt in that, many people can argue maybe that's simply a voice changer. But it's not just the sounds, it also moves like a robot, it has a very choppy movement, and it doesn't seem natural at all. And as we see in Clash of Clans as well, there is a Super P.E.K.K.A, which is essentially an upgraded P.E.K.K.A. But this one rises and turns into an explosive right after. I'm not sure if any living being inside a robot would purposely take their life. Unless, of course, it's simply a robot and nothing more. This theory is the belief that training camp was actually destroyed to construct the Builder's Workshop. Comparing both arenas art side by side, most of everything in the training camp is seen in the builder's workshop. The same tree on the top right is actually seen on the same spot torn down. The bridges align, the arrows on the floor are the same on the side of the walls of the builder's workshop. There's a spare log in the top as well, which appears in the bottom later on as the log. Of course, as you guys know, the lumberjack was the one to accidentally create the log. Maybe he was a helper, and during the process of constructing the builder's workshop, this incident happened. We aren't done yet though. The random rocks are also used in construction. To further support this, in the actual arenas, training camp has been seen to pretty much have a large and vast amount of trees and stone, giving them enough wood and stone to build the entire builder's workshop. They could have simply built a dam to stop the river and completely destroy training camp. When taking a look at the royal recruits, everything seems to be normal until you spot their helmets they aren't able to see. Every troop in the game, excluding of course machines, spells, and the royal hogs, which we'll get into in just a second, all of them have eyes. The royal hogs, like I said, they don't have sight. But this can easily be explained because these are hogs, and animals are typically known to have good smelling abilities. One theory suggests that the royal recruits could actually be the guards before they die. But instead of having free will, they're being controlled, they aren't alive, or maybe even possessed. The master builder has been known to create machines and structures that can either be controlled by artificial intelligence, or be controlled by an unknown source. It would be no surprise the royal recruits were actually recruited by the master builder before heading onto the arena. As you guys know, the master builder is not exclusive to the Clash of Clans world, because as we see in the builder's base, when constructing the flying machine, the parts can be seen on the little dock. This was of course before it was actually presented to Clash Royale. The master builder could have simply created special helmets for these young fellows and immediately either taking their ability to freely think or even kill them instantly and turn them into machines. But of course keeping the appearance of a living being to fool everyone. <laughs> I left this theory for last because there's not much to back up the story, but it did make complete sense. The theory is that each arena is taking place in a different time frame, which may also explain the training camp and builder's workshop theory. There's also an entire page that explains what age is each arena from, and it does connect the dots really well. The only problem, and the reason why it's last, is because there's a lot that can oppose this theory. So I didn't want to go in depth. I'll leave you guys to this page to read if you wish. So guys, I think that should be it for all the theories. Of course, there are tons of more that I could have mentioned, and if you guys have any ideas, go ahead and drop them down below to maybe one day make a part two if you want. Also, here's the winners for the giveaway of October. I'm sorry I announced them a bit late, but I did actually forget I've had a busy month. As you guys know, I've mentioned it like a million times. So my apologies. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of the weekend and until next time, have a gaming out. Peace.